our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. We ask you to invite somebody to join us today. Because you will be mighty blessed. And as we begin today, as is our discipline, let's humble ourselves and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, we thank you yes, Lord. for the life of God that is in the Word. Yes, Lord. We open our hearts mm -hmm. that you may speak, yes, Lord. touch, mm -hmm. change, yes, Lord. heal, mm -hmm. reform, mm -hmm. raise, mm -hmm. glorify Jesus in us, yes, Lord. form Christ in us, yes, Lord. and in our hearers. Mm -hmm that the Lord Jesus Christ mm. might be made manifest, yes, evident mm. in our midst. Yes, Have your way, Spirit of the living yes, God. Lord. This is our pledge, King of glory, mm. that when all is said and done, mm. the praise, mm. the glory, mm. all the worship mm. will return to you mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll take today's reading from the book of Romans, chapter 4, from verse 18 to verse 22. This is what the Bible says concerning Abraham. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be, and not to being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. To provide context to where we are, we will take a step backward and get the a glimpse of where this text is anchored. When Paul opens the scripture to us, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. So what is trying to say here is that this gospel has the power to save. But there is a condition attached to it. And the condition is believing. So everyone, irrespective of your background, irrespective of your present circumstances, the gospel of God has the power 
to save. And he goes on to say, for in it, referring to the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. So the righteousness of God, which we saw is the Greek word dikayosuni, where God comes to mankind that is fallen, that is sinful, and forgives their sin, and credits them with his righteousness. This righteousness, Paul explains that it is revealed in the gospel. And he concludes that and says, from faith to faith. Just as it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. The point here is that for you and I to be justified, it only can happen through faith. And faith alone. So how, what is the nature of this faith? What does it look like? What is involved in this faith? And this is what today's text aims to bring to the forefront. You see, for many people when we we talk about faith. What comes to their mind is mental ascent. Or what they feel deeply about. But the faith that works goes deeper than this. The faith that works is dynamic. It is personal. No. It goes to the very depth of your will. It takes you to make a decision and commit to Christ. That is very important. Why? Because Jesus makes this statement. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, and he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And he takes us to what will happen then, pointing to the future. In verse 22, he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? Done many wonders in your name. And in verse 23, he provides us with his response. He says, then I will say to them, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. What is inclined here? You see, when we talk about the faith that works, it involves the decisions that we make. It is evidenced in our work. It is evidenced in a transformed life. So it changes completely from what 
you were before. That is the faith that pleases God. It is the faith that draws away from everything and draws into God. Look at what he says in Hebrews 11.6. He says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God. Basically, what he's trying to say is faith draws you to God. So if it is drawing you a father from God, it is not the faith that pleases God. The faith that pleases God draws to God. And you draw to God believing that he is. And he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it is very important for us to have a clear understanding of the faith that works. What does it look like? And here we begin today's text. In 4.18 where Paul brings us the example of Abraham and he says who contrary to hope in hope believed. And let me just give you an overview. Look at what is happening. In 18, it says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. And then verse 19, it says, are not being weak in faith. He grew strong in faith, always strengthening in faith. And later we will see in the next episode that this faith was not for Abraham alone. What happened to Abraham was for our sake. But let's go down and break down this, these lines. Verse 18, Paul starts off by saying, who contrary to hope in hope believe. And here he brings to light like two, it's like two forces. One is hope. And on the other is hope. So you have hope on one side, which is contrary to another hope. So it's like hope is opposing hope. So there is a collision of two hopes. Let's define them. What is the first hope? The first hope is what I would call the the hope that man has. The hope that assesses your surroundings. Looks at what you are capable of doing. Look at the resources that you have. Assesses the environment for what it is. And then hopes the best of this situation. So this is basically a perspective one has of the situation that they are in. And that is the first hope. And the second hope that we're talking about is the hope that is God-centered. That is grounded or rooted in the word of God. This is a hope that has assurance <laughs> 
not based on what the circumstances are. But this is a hope that has the assurance based on what God has said he will do in his word. And here the Bible says concerning Abraham that he against one hope in hope the hope of the word of God believed look at what is happening and this is the first characteristic that comes to the faith that works the faith that works must be grounded in the word of God so here is what, when we talk about believing the Bible says in hope believed. So the, here believing is a doing word. Faith has to be active. So it was not just a redundant stagnant hope. He believed. And this was active. That Greek word there is the word pisteo, which means to commit to, which means to trust, which means to rely upon, so which means to rest in. So what happened to Abraham, when one hope spoke hopelessness, he anchored his hope. He rested in. He committed to. He trusted in what the word of God said. Look at what he says in, in verse 18. He says, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be <clears throat> here is a man almost a hundred years he looks at his body and his body is dead. When he looks at his age, it is impossible for him to father a child. When he looks at Sarah, his wife, her womb is dead also. So on one hand, is the situation as is. That is what he can see. On the other hand, there is the voice that is coming to his spirit. The spoken word of God to his spiritual ears which is saying if you believe in me, if you commit to me, if you place your trust Trust in me. I will make you a father of many nations. From you, many descendants are going to come. Now, at this point in time, Abraham is not regenerated. He is a pagan. He's still an idolater. The word of God has come to him. He first of all sent him on a journey away from his father. He goes away from the land of his fathers. Takes him full circle to the land of promise. Now here, 
the promise comes to him. The word of God comes to him. And God says, I am going to make you a father of many nations. Here God begins to promise. And the word that he speaks to him appears impossible. So Abraham has a choice to make. When he looks at himself, and looks at his wife Sarah, it is possible to conclude that this is impossible. Then he hears the word of God presented to him. And he has a decision to make. Will he look to his situation which is impossible or will he turn his attention commit, rest, trust in what God has spoken. And here he chose to believe the word of God. He didn't believe what he saw. He chose rather to believe God. And it is at that moment that God credits him with righteousness. Now when you look in the Bible, it's not isolated. There are so many people within the word of God that believed and were credited. Look at the Apostle Matthew. He's in his booth. Jesus passes by. He's doing well. And Jesus tells him, follow me. And he has a choice to make. To follow Jesus or to stay where he is making the money. He wasn't doing badly off. But he had a choice to make. To go by what he's seeing or to go by what has been spoken to him. He left all and followed him. Look at Paul of Tarsus, the one who brings this revelation to us. On his way to Damascus, he meets with the risen Savior who tells him, I have an assignment for you that he later unveils to him of how he will be the preacher of the gospel to the Gentiles. And what does he do? He chooses to believe in spite of his present circumstances. Consider the woman at the well. In John chapter 4, what does this woman do? This Samaritan woman lives behind her port and goes to the city and tells them, come see man who has told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? In that moment, that is when her regeneration took place. You see, there are so many, those are defining moments. They are defining moments of faith. When you choose the word of God over your present circumstances and in every believer in Jesus Christ, it may not be as dramatic as this. But there is what we call the defining moment of faith. When you take that step of faith from the broad way that leads to destruction onto the narrow way that leads to eternal life. And even you, 
Nawe. Watching and listening to us today, you have a choice to make. Nawe. As the word of God comes to you, will you stay on the broad way? Or will you take the narrow way? Romans 10, 13 tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So salvation is available to you. But like Abraham, you have got to choose to believe the word of God. The second aspect that I want us to look here is what comes to us in verse 20. The Bible says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. What is it that we see here? We see that the faith that works is anchored on what God has promised. So this is. It is not believing scripture and what tradition says. It is not believing scripture and adding what culture says. It is not getting scripture and adding what a certain dogma from a certain denomination says. No. This is believing what God has and only and only that. It is coming to the point where you say, all that matters is what God has promised. You see, when you read the Bible, the Bible is God's word. But within God's word, God has made specific promises. Why does he make promises? Because he expects us to anchor our faith into what he has promised. So, for many of us today, we fail to realize that when God makes a promise, he is committing that this is what I will do. He's saying that this is what I will do if you only do this. He is promising to deliver on what he has committed to. You see, today, if somebody came to you and made a promise to many of us, you would be thankful. Why? Because you believe that that person is going to deliver. Yet when we read God's word and we see what God has promised, we are not that thankful. Why? Because we are not taking God at his word. You see, when it comes to the promise that God gave to Abraham, the Bible tells us <laughs> Abraham did not waver at what God had promised. What is the point that we need to get from there? You see, when God promises in his word, he is not just bringing to you objective facts. Facts that you can deliberate on. No, 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 no. When God promises, he's not just giving you data. So it is not data for you to manipulate. He's not giving you information. No. God is not giving you 
like information so that you can catalog it, have it, okay, this is what God said on this date, keep it in your notebook and put it somewhere. Takuwa mauli leo nyoko gawandi ko gaterike wali inti kulunako gundi katonda yogira na angi. No. Sibwe chitio. When we read God's word, we need to understand that in God's word, here we find what God has promised to us. Mwe tujoku zula katonda vya tusubi za. And here God stipulates the terms of his promise and he guarantees to fulfill his part. The requirement is for us to fulfill our part. And this is what we see with Abraham. The promise to Abraham had only one condition. If Abraham would believe and when he believed, it was credited to him for righteousness. Because he believed, the promise of the son came through. Because he believed, even the bigger promise, which links this son to the son that would come in the fullness of time, born of a woman, born under the law, that he may set free all those who were held bondage by the law. It points to Jesus Christ. But Abraham had to make a decision. Or let me put it this way. When we read through the pages of scripture, we see something that is very characteristic of every promise of God. There has never been a promise made by God that he was not able to fulfill when a people moved in faith. The Bible says Abraham did not waver at the faith of God through unbelief. In essence, he had what God said. He believed what God said and he did not waver. He did not Stutter, he did not trip, but was strengthened in faith. It is the promise that caused him to grow in strength. So he grew from strength to strength. So when he grew from strength to strength, giving glory to God. So what, whatever it takes, brethren, when God's word comes to you, when the promise of God comes to you, you need to act on it. It has to grow from strength to strength. And when we choose to act on God's word, when we choose to believe God's word, do you know what happens? We give glory to God. When we fall, when we fail to believe God's word, when we fail to act on what God had said, then we are robbing God of his glory. That is how serious unbelief is. You see, when we don't believe, then we are placing the glory to ourselves. We are trusting in ourselves. We are trusting in our plan. We are trusting in our idea. 
that somehow we will pull this off. That does not give glory to God. But when we believe what he has said, when we look to God, with the eyes of faith and take God at his word, then there we give glory to God. So we see that Abraham chose to believe God's promise to become the father of many nations. Did God come through? Yes, God came through. We, wow. So in the same way, Mungeriye when mu, we choose to believe God, nafe, we, katonda, we give glory to God. Tuba, tuba, muwe, when we act in faith we, tuta, ambulida, muhu, and obey God, le, tu, gonde, da, it means we choose to magnify Him. Chitegeza, gosaze, wo, kumu, guru, you choose to honor Him. Gosaze, wo, kumu, we, chiti, you we, choose to lift Him up. Gosaze, let me put it this way. The faith that works is the faith that honors God. And God honors that faith. Let me say it again. The faith that works is the faith that chooses to honor God. And God honors that faith. So we looked number one that the faith that works considers God's word. The faith that works number two anchors in the promises that God has made. Number three is what we see in verse 21. It says, and being fully convinced. Some versions say, and being fully persuaded. That what he had promised. He was able to perform. Being fully assured. Being fully convinced that what he had promised he is able to perform. The faith that works is the faith that believes in God's power to perform. Not in our ability, but in God's ability to perform. Here the Bible says he was fully convinced. There, there were no two ways about it. He wasn't going 75 and leaving the 25. He wasn't going 60-40. It wasn't an 80-20. It wasn't even a 90-10. He was fully convinced. Hundred percent. And the Greek word there. It is the Greek word pleroforeo, which means entirely persuaded, entirely assured. Certain that God Katondo, without any hesitation whatsoever without any shadow of doubt he was convinced that he was able to perform what he had said. He was convinced that God was able to back up every word that he said. That he would be able to do what he said he would do. He knew that he was able to perform. 
Yamanya. beyond any shadow of doubt that God was going to do it. And the Bible says, and therefore, taking us back to Genesis 15, 6, it was accounted to him. It was credited to him for righteousness. In that moment, not later, in that moment when he believed, not when he took Isaac up for sacrifice in Genesis 22. No, in Genesis 15, when he believed, it was credited to him at that moment. That is when he was regenerated. That is when God elevates him based on faith and faith alone. And that is the same way with us. So when we believe in Jesus Christ and believe in the power of God to do what God said he will do, so when you believe in Jesus Christ, God said, I will wash away your sins. <laughs> so we are persuaded, we are sure that God will do what he said he will do. Why? Because that is what he has promised. He has promised that when we place our faith in him, we shall be saved. He promises to wash us with his righteousness. To clothe us in the righteousness of God. The Bible says if any man be in Christ is a new creation. He promises to make us a new creation. So if you ask me how, I don't know. But I know he has promised and I am persuaded that he is able to do what he has promised he will do. When we believe in him, he promises to give us his spirit, the Holy Spirit to be with us, in us, guiding us, leading us, bearing testimony of Jesus Christ and he does it. Why? Because God promised and God fulfills what he said he will do. So he promised to make a new person out of you and I that come to Jesus Christ. That is why I can confidently say that it is impossible. It is absolutely impossible for some want to place their faith in Jesus Christ and remain the same. It is impossible. Why? Because God has promised in his word and God fulfills his promises throughout the pages of scripture. God has guaranteed that no word proceeds from his mouth returns to him void. But it accomplishes everything he sends it to him. And it prospers there. That is what God has promised to us. So for you watching and listening to us, when we talk about the faith that works, that faith has to make a decision. 
That faith is dynamic. That faith is repentant. It, it cannot move in the direction it was moving before. That faith changes direction. And now points to God. That faith is personal. It is not the faith of so and so. Not the pastor's faith. Not the spouse's faith. Not the father's faith. Not the mother's faith. This is your personal faith. In the person of Jesus Christ. And what he has done for you. This faith believes in what God does. You don't have to have seen it to believe it. You have to believe it to see it. This faith that we talk about is obedient. Look at what he says in Acts 17. Paul says truly the times of ignorance God has overlooked but now commands all men. This is not a suggestion. This is a command to all men everywhere to repent. 1730 to change their mind. To change their perspective. Why? Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. And he has given assurance of this by raising him from the dead. And that man is Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us that assurance. So why does that place you and I? That places us at the point of decision. Let me put it this way. To make the choice is wise. To choose not to make the choice is to make the choice. So whether you choose to or choose not to, you have made a choice. So if you commit your life to Jesus Christ, you made a choice to believe God based on what he has promised. But if you choose not to believe, Romans 1.18 puts it plain to us that you have made a choice. And this is what he says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. You don't want to go that way. That is why you must believe in Jesus Christ. That is why you must commit your life to him. That is why you must surrender everything to him. He will forgive your sins. He will clothe you with his righteousness. Why? Because if you don't do that, then you will die in unbelief as an object of God's wrath. So today I am appealing to you 
Turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus. Believe in him. Place your trust in what he has done. And God will do what he promised he will do. So if you are watching us, you are listening to us. You have not been graciously saved. Right now, I am going to pray with you. Place your faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you have done. Abraham was a pagan. When he believed God, when he believed what he had promised, when he believed in his power to transform, God credited him with righteousness. Even today, the same God we credit you with this righteousness. When you believe in Christ Jesus and his finished work on your behalf, let's say this prayer. Say, God of heaven, creator of the universe, the redeemer of mankind, I come to you today. I believe, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. You sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Christ, to die for my sins. Today I believe that Jesus is my savior. I believe in him and his finished work on my behalf. I trust and place reliance on what he has done for me. Lord, cleanse me. Fill me with your spirit and lead me on the way everlasting. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. But I want you to take the next step. Faith, I told you, is dynamic. The faith that works does not sit on its laurels. Call that number on the screen. Someone will pick up the phone and provide you with the basic instruction on this wonderful journey of faith. For those of you that are believers, this is our mandate. The field is ripe. <laughs> it is time for you and I to join the laborers and reap this harvest for the glory of God. Because God has promised that they that bring men, that win men, they shall shine like the stars. They have a reward, the soul winner's reward. Please join the multitude and let's win the lost to the cause of Christ. Thanks for listening to God's word. And believing God's word. And choosing to apply it in faith. And God richly bless you as you follow his word. So from Dominion Church, it's been a pleasure having you. Until we meet again, we say shalom. God richly bless you.